Assalamualaikum. Welcome to Minute Maths. Now we are going to study dengue fever. So it's a protozoal infection, a viral infection that is uh, transmitted by vector mosquito Aedes aegypti. Uh, is present in Africa and in Asian countries we have Aedes albopictus. There are four strains of uh, dengue virus that are uh, now the fifth is also being discovered. Now matter what which strain is causing uh, the fever the presentation clinical presentation is the same and now how the patient presents the patient, uh, the, you see the spectrum of the disease, it is divided into uh, three parts. The first is the febrile phase. The second is the critical phase. And third is the convalescent phase. The febrile, as the name suggests, patient has fever, that is high grade, with rigors, chills, associated with two or more than two of the following uh, constitutional symptoms like myalgia, swell myalgia, the, the bone breaking fever itself of course sometimes, then headache and retroorbital pain. nausea or vomiting. So this occurs usually in the initially from 2 to 7 days. Then the fee in the critical phase the fever subsides. And this is the we call it the critical phase because this is the phase when the actual disaster occurs. The endothelial injury. And this endothelial injury leads to the leakage of the plasma in the spaces, in the third, third spaces. And that leads to pleural effusions or ascites. And this usually lasts for the critical phase, time is 24 to 48 hours. And then the convalescent phase when the leakage stops and the patient recovers fully with lifetime immunity for the same strain. I repeat for the same strain. It means if a patient moves to the other other area of uh, his country or another country, in which another strain of the dengue is present and the patient can get infected but this patient cannot be infected by the same strain twice so how we investigate for a suspected case of dengue we suspect a patient of having dengue fever the patient comes with fever that is high grade along with two or more than two of these uh, features uh, that I have mentioned before, uh, myalgia, headache, red orbital pain or your vomiting. Then how we uh, perform the workup, the first line, the first test that we usually go for is the CBC, the complete blood uh, count and what we are looking for is that the cytokinias of the two cell lines, the WBCs and the platelets. The first cell line to be decreased in dengue is the WBC, then the platelets. We usually monitor the platelets that usually go down day by day. And uh, how we uh, 
make a probable diagnosis of dengue fever? We label a patient the proper uh, probable dengue if the patient has these features: a WBC count of less than three thousand and a platelet count of less than one hundred. <coughs> We label the patient as a probable case of dengue fever. Then we go to the next step to confirm the diagnosis. And we confirm the diagnosis by doing there are multiple tests, but if the patient comes within five to seven days of the illness, then we do the NS1 antigen. Usually these are sensitive to about 75% to 97% it has sensitivity and specificity but usually uh, it is sensitive and specific for the first 6 to 7 days. First 5 days mostly. After this from the 6th day onward we prefer to do dengue antibodies. IgM or the IgG. From the 6th day onwards. There are other uh, modalities also that are used in research uh, laboratories that are the PCR for the dengue virus. But these are usually for research purposes not for the uh, for the purpose of diagnosis in the uh, in the hospitals. So that's how patient comes with this. We suspect that it is suspect that it is dengue fever. We go for uh, complete blood count if the WBC is less than 3000 and the platelets are less than 100, we we'll label the patient as a probable case of dengue fever and we go on for the confirmation by doing the NS1 antigen if the history is of up to 5 days. If the history of the fever is more than 6 days, then we go for the dengue IgM and IgG antibodies. Now, how to treat a patient with dengue fever? First thing we should need to know is that there is no antiviral available. Till now, the treatment is based on the symptoms. Totally symptomatic. If the patient has headache, myalgia, we prefer to give antipyretics. And the drug of choice is acetaminophen, paracetamol, panadol. If the patient has nausea or vomiting, then we give the anti -emetics. And then, regarding the diet, there is no need of any special juices like apple juices, like pine apples, or the lemon juice for the treatment of dengue fever. These all are myths. Any diet that the patient is able to take in can be used. No specific, no dietary restriction and no special dietary advice given. And then as uh, now regarding the criteria then when to treat the patient as an outpatient when to admit the patient is if the patient now the when to treat a patient as an outpatient is the patient is diagnosed or confirmed case of dengue and the patient has patient is taking in orderly there is no nausea vomiting patient can take and patient has is hemodynamically stable there is no evidence of any bleed and so if the patient Although the patient is diagnosed as a case of dengue fever and the patient is able to take care orally, then the patient can be managed as an outpatient. We give the, the treatment that I have mentioned 
uh, pyridone and any enzymatic if there is uh, no other opening. So when to admit? So any patient having the criteria for the fever and then the platelet count is less than 100, the WBC is less than 3, we admit the patient. And then there are other exceptions. This is, although this is a, a bit difficult concept, but exceptions are any patient that has comorbids should be admitted. All orbits like a patient is diabetic, although the platelets are in the safe range, more than 100 or WBC is more than 3, but the patient is diabetic or the patient is hypertensive or the patient has ischemic heart disease or pregnancy because these needs close monitoring so that's why we admit the patient so any patient with fever that is confirmed uh, by all these steps and the patient has comorbids even the plated count are uh, in the safe range we admit the patient now Two complications. See, if WBC less than three thousand, less than three thousand. But less than three you count, no? I don't three goes to Canada. Three goes. Then, what is dengue hemorrhagic fever? These two uh, complications we should be knowing. What is the dengue hemorrhagic fever and what is dengue shock syndrome? Dengue hemorrhagic fever is we label a patient with dengue hemorrhagic fever if he or she uh, has the following criteria of having fever number one of greater than two days less than ten days patient having fever is having any hemorrhagic manifestation like uh, epistaxis, gingival bleed, or there is evidence on the lab of the platelet of less than 100 and the most important thing, the most there is an evidence of plasma leakage in the form of pleural effusion. or in the form of abdominal ascites. Now, this is the alarming thing. When there is third spacing of the fluid, the patient is in the critical phase. Now, we have to monitor the patient more vigorously. So, dengue shock syndrome. So what is, when do we label a patient with a dengue shock syndrome? If the patient has all the criteria of the DHF, he is meeting the, all the four criteria of dengue hemorrhagic fever plus patient is having, uh, the patient is drowsy, have cold peripheries, Has blood pressure of less than 90-60, it's hypotensive, and the pulse pressure, the difference between the systolic and the diastolic pressure is less than or equal to 20 millimeter of mercury. This is the definition of the dengue shock syndrome, or in easy words, a patient having dengue hemorrhagic fever and on clinical examination, the patient is in shock then this is the dengue shock syndrome. How we treat these conditions? The bottom line is we have to replace the fluid at a certain level because the leakage is going on and then we have to replace at a certain level. At a certain rate we have to replace the fluid. In the shock we just double the rate. So how will we, we treat a dengue hemorrhagic fever? We administer fluids and the fluid of choice is 0.9% saline. We 
give it at a rate of about different rates we recommend for you guys it is 0.3 liters in 24 hours and we have to give it to for about uh, 48 hours so 4.6 liters in 48 hours usually we administer at 30 drops per minute that is equal to 1.5 ml but this is usually the case in the cases if the patient has the features of daily hemorrhagic fever along with the patient has uh, these characteristics of shock then we double the rate in this we double the rate of uh, infusing fluids so when do we get to know that when to stop the fluid or when to monitor the uh, the rate of the fluid administration is very intense very aggressive monitoring for the DHF we monitor the pulse blood pressure pulse pressure complete blood picture complete blood count for hematocrit because when there is plasma leakage there is hemo concentration and the hematocrit rises the rise in the hematocrit is usually noted and we even do the ultrasound abdomen for the pleural infusions for any plasma leakage any free fluid in dengue hemorrhagic fever these pulse blood pressure and the pulse pressure these are usually done early we even send the complete blood count 3 early or 4 early and ultrasound abdomen for the free food is done twice daily and in the cases of dengue in the case of uh, dengue shock syndrome all of these things these are to be monitored 15 every 15 minutes so this is how there are other uh, variations in the treatment but this is uh, in a very complicated level and this is the basis of the treatment is uh, in the case of complications in the dengue hemorrhagic fever and the dengue shock syndrome the bottom line is to replace the fluid and the fluid of choice is the 0.9 percent saline and it is infused at a certain level and we monitor at uh, different times in dengue hemorrhage fever usually early in the case of dengue shock syndrome every 15 minutes so this is all about dengue fever thank you very much